So you've just spent almost a thousand pounds on a brand new Sony APS-C mirrorless camera. You've been watching loads of videos of it on YouTube and you just can't believe how good the picture quality is for the money. You go to make some of your own videos and then you're thinking, why doesn't my video look like theirs? I mean, why? Why could it not look as good as theirs? Probably gonna be down to the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. We'll talk about this in a second. I don't think it's as bad as people say it is, but all Sony cameras really, when you buy them, you're gonna need to get yourself some fancy new lenses to make it look nicer. Now, I like to use wide angle lenses. So I would generally run this at 16 millimeters. Now, if you wanted to get a wide angle lens for a Sony camera, I'm pretty sure everyone on the internet will tell you to buy the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. And I would totally agree with that. And it is a cheap lens for how good of quality it is. And the fact that it works with Sony's hybrid autofocus system does make it exceptionally good, but that camera is still expensive. It retails anywhere between 350 and 400 pounds. Now, when I bought my A6400, it was only actually selling for 250 pounds on the run up to Christmas. And I was like, eh, I'll buy it January. And in January, it went back up in price. And because that lens is so sought after, even buying it secondhand, I'm seeing it selling between 85, 90% of its retail value secondhand. So you might as well just buy it new. But there is another. There is another 16 millimeter lens, as long as you're willing to go manual, which we'll talk about in a minute, because anyone that's sort of new to cameras, you probably worry about manual focus, but there's some really great features on the Sony camera that make it a lot easier than you think. He says that, I, hopefully I'm in focus because otherwise that's all gone to crap. But this is the Samyang 16mm f2.0, also sold under the brand Rockening, okay? Now this lens retails for 250 to 350 pounds. So it always seems to be about 100 pounds less than the Sigma lens. And if you were buying it new, I would just say, wait a bit, save up the extra 100 pounds because you get some, you know, lower f-stops and you get all the autofocus. It's not really that much more money if you're willing to wait another month. But the benefit about this is like what I said earlier, is that the Samyang lens is available a lot cheaper secondhand than the Sigma. I paid £145 for this lens. Luckily, I got one in absolute mint condition with the box and everything else. It doesn't even look like it's ever been outside. It looks like it's probably been used for the same thing that I'm going to use it for, which are talking headpieces on YouTube. And I think it looks pretty decent. For someone that isn't, you know, big on photography, pretty crap at colour grading, using a 15 pound umbrella light and then this little thing bouncing some light off the wall. I have got a bigger one, but um, ooh, <laughs> I was playing with it last night and I left it on and I just wanted to make this video. I think it looks pretty good as long as I'm in focus. That should be me out of focus. That should be me in focus. So then before we talk about the Sam Yang lens, a little bit more depth. Let me talk about this. Let me talk about this kit lens and the struggles I had and the struggles that you might have as well. Um, and also the other lens that I've been using, this tiny little 16mm. Look, here's a shot of my new old 16mm versus new 16mm. It's quite, I, I knew this lens was going to be big, but it's fucking massive. So when I originally bought the Sony, I actually was shifting over from Panasonic. And I did regret it at first because I had a Lumix G9 with a 12 to 60 Leica, 25mm prime, 14mm prime, and something else, but I can't remember what it was but I like that camera. It did 4K 60, so that's definitely a downgrade there. But actually more the other things that have annoyed me a little bit more is not having dual memory cards to record to because that's just redundancy and it's safe and it's good. Um, and just all the dials on the Lumix, you know, I could just ping anything in straight away and get my settings on. Now the Sony menu system is excessive. There's definitely some good videos you can watch on that. And I've got most of the stuff I want on buttons now. I'm just really hoping I'm in focus. I think I'm in focus. I'm pretty sure I'm in focus. But that is what I didn't like about the Panasonic. It's focusing system. So for this sort of, when I'm doing talking heads, I'd always shoot manual. And that's something that I always recommend you do anyway. When you're sort of in a fixed position, put it in manual, better picture quality. The problem was is I do a lot of unboxings, looking at tech products, PC builds, all the sort of stuff that I, I haven't really done a lot of of late because of a. Uh, covid and all other stuff but you know quite often i'm pulling loads of little things out of boxes or i'm like look at this little label look at this little logo maybe like a macro lens might help me out a little bit more for that sort of stuff but always focus moves around the amount of times i've just been like there like you can't even see me because i'm quite zoomed in i'm like come on panasonic come on just get in focus okay and that's why i went over to sony and that's why a lot of people go over to sony because if you're new to all this camera stuff 
You know, one of the biggest worries is focusing. You want to always be in focus. You don't want to be constantly in and out of focus for the entire shot of the video. And the focusing is fast and it's perfect for this for me on um, unboxings. I feel like I'm waffling on for ages now. Talk about the Samyang lens, Troy. Talk about the Samyang, not this one. But the problem I have with this is when it's an autofocus, it focus when it's on my face and I've gone through every settings, I've adjusted the drive speeds, I've looked at all the meterings, I've gone from wide, narrowing spot, you know, all the different autofocus modes that you can do. Every single com com combination, combination, because I've had this camera for about four months now. And around the edges, in the corners, dun -dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun -dun, every time I move just a little bit, focus pulling. And it doesn't like these RGB fans, which I don't blame it. You know, trying to, it's got to keep on that all the time. So yeah, this little lens, I'll probably get a better zoom lens at some point. Perfect for me for unboxings, nice and quick. Perfect if I was moving around the desk, if I was maybe doing you a tour with my new setup, maybe I should do that. You know, that, yeah, fine. But for the talking headpiece is not good. So I actually switched up lenses, even though I'm doing manual because, you know, I say I'm, I'm trying to push you all onto manual, but uh, you know, even me a few months ago was scared about doing manual focus. Please be in focus. Oh, I'm going to be crying if I'm not in focus. Um, so I got this one, the 16mm f2.8, which again, any photographer, anyone that's into cameras will tell you this little lens is trash. But for YouTube, this is a perfect little lens and you can get them secondhand for like 60, 70 quid, which is what I do. Now you don't get hybrid autofocus with this, so you might think it's a bit of a step back. But being a nice little prime lens, and even though I was rocking it at like f4.5, because that's where it's more sharper rather than f2.8, it's fine. I didn't have any of that pulsating. It didn't matter. I could just leave this lens on all the time. Didn't matter if it was a manual focus or autofocus. It would just run good. But the picture quality just wasn't what I wanted. It just wasn't what I wanted. And the Sigma is, was just too expensive for me. So I went for the Samyang, the f2.0. And I'm actually rolling at f2.8, okay? ISO is at 320. We're shooting at 4K, 25 frames per second. So shutter speed is at 150, okay? So everything manual, everything dialed in. Now there's some cool little features on the Sony. So there's one called peaking assist. I'll get you some B-roll of it. Where, as you can see, there's like red um, around whatever I'm using for the B-roll thing. But right now, my entire beard is red and my eyes are red, which is telling me that I should be, should be, stop whinging about this now, should be in focus. I've also got my front button on it. Um, my C1 button on the front, I can press that in and zoom in, okay? So then I can have a better look to see if I'm in focus. Now, this lens does still pr look pretty decent at f2.0, but I found around sort of here, it just even in the center, it just wasn't as sharp as between 2.8 and 4, but obviously I want to be able to use less light in, like this 15, 15 pound umbrella light. I know, I was going to buy Elgato key lights for like 300, 350 quid the other week, and I was like, do I actually need them? I'd like something better thinking about a godox but yeah i put this lens on last night and i think it's a massive improvement it looks absolutely fantastic i couldn't believe how big it is this thing is built like an absolute tank so it's f2.0 to f22 now there is half f stops all the way up to f16 um you get the little hood that goes over it, it comes in a massive box um then you've also got like a little pull pouch and um, the focusing ring is like super smooth and the good thing with this being 16 millimeter as well, and another great thing is actually its focusing distance is 20 centimeters. So the camera is literally like, like I've got tiny T-Rex arms and I could put the camera back another foot and I could still pull the focusing ring. Like that's the thing is you worry about, about being in focus. As long as you sort of sat in a similar position, it's fine. And the fact that you can just adjust it. So I don't know, that lens there is probably not in focus. Let's go back the other way. There we go. The lens now should be roughly in focus. And then it's just a few turns back, you know, and I should be back in focus. It's literally that easy. It's nothing to worry and panic about. And for under £200, I mean, it feels like my A6400 is a brand new camera. And obviously you could pair this with anything, you know, any Sony um, E-mount system, you can pair this lens with it. So if you're someone that's using like a, a5100 for live streaming um yeah maybe an older a6000 you can use this now it is a bit weighty it is a weighty lens and you probably can't see behind me here so i've got one of these they sell like the monopods now everyone sells them you know like um that the key lights are on i couldn't believe it when the key lights came out like no one sells a desk clamp you know a desk clamp mount so you can just stick one of these on and what's 
I actually emailed Nua and was like, can you just make me one? I need one of those clamps. I've got the cheapest one, so like the £20 Amazon one. I think the £30 one's a little bit more substantial. So it wobbles around a little bit, and then I've got the newer Z mount. Have this on it, and it holds it fine just above my desk, um, just above my monitor. So I'm going to be using this for live streaming as well. Built like an absolute tank, and uh, for the last time, hopefully I've been in focus. But yeah, I think if you can get this lens for under £200, you're happy to do manual focus, and I just showed you how easy it was for me there. And this means just looking at the tiny little screen as well. I'm sorry if my eyes have been up the whole time, but it's just why we're getting used to it. Um, I'm also using Octava microphone as well. I'm just waffling for the sake of waffling now. Um, got the Octava microphone going into a mixer back into the camera. You know, this is a sick setup. I finally feel like this camera was worth the money for me. Luckily, I actually bought the 6400 for the same price as the 6100. But yeah, it just did. I didn't feel like I had a thousand pounds worth of camera because that's what the 6400 can sell up to with the kit lens. And it didn't feel like it. Now it finally feels like it. Now the only excuse is my color correction and sorting all of that stuff out and getting everything looking nice. But yeah, I just wonder your thoughts and let me know in the comment section. Is this something that you'd be willing to get? Because no one talks about this lens. I can't see any videos of it being used like this. I'm just waffling and waffling on because I can never end my videos. But no one talks about it and I don't understand why. I think for home use, for video use where you're sat down, this lens is absolutely phenomenal for the price. Let me know what you think anyway in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back with some good videos real soon.